This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hello there, guys, and welcome to episode number 14 of SketchUp, a 3D Toolbox. I'm Cameron Harris, and today we're going to be learning how to model some basic furniture in SketchUp, specifically a table and a chair. Now, this is going to add to the living room that we built in our last episode. Now, if you didn't manage to get your own living room built, uh, don't worry, you can actually download... Uh, the living room uh, project from our last episode, which is on our website. Just go to harwoodpodcast.com, click on SketchUp, a 3D toolbox to get to our show notes, and then look for uh, episode number 13, and then you'll be able to download the lesson file from there if you want to follow along with us in this episode. So we're going to start learning some more complex modeling techniques, how to do more intricate models, and uh, should be a lot of fun. Let's get going. Okay, so as I said, today we're going to start building some basic furniture. And when I say basic furniture, I mean tables and chairs. That's all we're going to cover today, just a typical dining room table uh, and some nice dining room chairs. And that's all we're going to cover because these are going to be pretty complex models comparatively um, to something like this. I mean, this is a pretty complex model by itself. These are going to get a little bit more intricate. So it's not so much complexity, it's more that these are going to be much smaller and much more compact, and there's going to be more shapes and elements going on to them. And we're also going to do a quick recap of groups, and I'm going to show you exactly why they're so important when you're modeling furniture to put in a room. So let's get started. Now the first thing you want to do is figure out where you're going to be building these things. And uh, you might think, oh, I'll just build them right in the room. That's not always the best way to go. Uh, uh, sometimes when you're building these things in the room you get kind of closed in because you've got walls on every side you might want to move the camera to here to get a better view of something and the wall is there not always the best way to go so what I like to do is I like to actually pick a spot that's kind of separate from my model over here kind of outside if you will and just build it over here and then once I'm done with it then I will bring it into my room using the move tool so let's go ahead and get started on that We'll start by building a relatively simple thing, a table. So a table, uh, if you think of the individual elements of it, you have uh, the table top, and then you have four legs, typically, if you're going with just a regular old rectangular table. And we're not going to do too much fancy stuff with it. We're just going to kind of get the basic shapes down. So first thing you want to do is switch to the rectangle tool. Remember, R for the rectangle tool. And then you want to uh, start uh, drawing your rectangle. Now, for this, you need to know uh, how big you want your tabletop to be. So go ahead and start drawing. And you know you can see, if you look down the dimensions box there, this is about 8 feet long, 3 feet wide. That's not really what we're going for. Let's go with more like, um, let's see, how long do we want this to be? Let's make it a 7 foot long table. So we'll go 7 apostrophe and then comma, and then let's say we want to make it four feet wide, so we'll say four apostrophe and then go. That looks like a nice, uh, I'd say a pretty nice size for a table. Now again, you know, you might want to make yours a different size, you might want to model it after a table that you already have, the physical table that you actually own, you know, go right ahead. So now we've got this nice little rectangle here. Now let's go ahead and extrude this into 3D using the push-pull tool. So we'll go ahead and grab the push-pull tool by using the P key, push-pull, select the face, click once, and then pull it up. Now let's see here, a typical tabletop isn't usually too thick, maybe two inches, so let's go ahead and just do two inches. I'll just enter in two, enter. So now we've got a very nice, uh, good-sized dining room tabletop, and the next step is to start adding the legs. Now this is a, where it gets kind of interesting because uh, Adding legs, you might think, oh, well, I'll build the legs separately and then attach them. Well, actually, no, you don't have to do that. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get underneath the table. So just kind of rotate yourself so that you're looking up at it, uh, at its underside. And then you're going to actually add the legs right then and there. What you can do is you can actually use the rectangle tool on existing rectangles to kind of create shapes within shapes. 
So like, you know, for example, right now, if we grab the bottom of this table, we just grab the whole face. But if we use the rectangle tool and then zoom in on a corner where a table leg would usually be and then click on the outside corner, you notice it snaps to that outside corner, click once and then go in, you notice it's actually going to draw a rectangle on the underside of the table. So it's going to kind of divide it. Now, let's see, how big do we want this table leg to be? Let's say we want it to be definitely a square. Let's say we want it to be maybe a two inch square. So we'll go uh, two comma two. And in this case, we don't need to really worry about which side is going to be the long side and which side is going to be the short side because you know the, both sides are exactly the same. Nice thing about drawing squares, hit enter. And now you see we've got a nice uh, little two inch square right there. And now if we use the push pull tool, you notice well, if we click right here, we still get this. But if we click just on this little circle, uh, little, sorry, square right here, click once and then pull it down. You notice, oh, we're getting a nice little table leg here. Now the one thing that's a little bit weird about this is that if you look on it, what looks strange about this picture? You'll notice that up at the top here, so like I'll go ahead and just click this once, just temporarily. You notice that at the top here, the table leg goes straight up and then it fuses seamlessly into the table top. Now in reality, not very many tables do that. You would typically have a line right here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use a technique, um, if you remember the push-pull episode, you'll remember this, but I'll just do a quick recap of it. By default, when you grab the push-pull tool and you pull and extrude in, uh, you know, extrude something out into 3D, or you know, in this case, further into 3D, um, it just grabs it and extrudes it. It doesn't add any lines, it's completely seamless, it makes it like it's just made, made out of one solid piece of material. Same thing with here, you notice there's no line where the original depth was. So like this line up here just keeps moving, it doesn't make a copy of that line. In this case, we actually want to do that. Now, if I'm not making any sense, just watch. It's a very visual thing, kind of hard to explain. So this is what the normal push-pull tool looks like, right? However, if you push the Option key before you use the push-pull tool, you'll notice that you get a little plus button next to your icon. Now if you click once on the table leg, look at that, it leaves those lines where it was. So it's extruding a separate shape, which is makes it look much more like a table, right? Much more realistic. So let's go ahead and make this, uh, let's see here, typical table height. Let's go ahead and make it, let's do 30 inches. So we'll just type in 30, go. Very nice, that's a very nice table leg height. So that's one leg, now let's go ahead and do this to the other four. Let's see if uh, we can do this a little bit faster this time. Go ahead and get underneath the table. Just like that, that's kind of a good angle. Use the rectangle tool, two comma two for a two inch square. There we go. Now you notice that once you use the push pull tool, after you use it once in that little plus mode where it makes a copy of the lines, uh, it, it defaults back to its original state where it just does that. So every time you use it, you need to hit the option key again. So you notice it's working just fine. Now 30 inches, go. And now you notice that the plus symbol is gone. So now we're back to our default no copying of the lines, one seamless piece push-pull tool, which is fine, but just keep that in mind if you want to do something like this multiple times in a row, just remember it's going to default back to that uh, seamless mode, or whatever you want to call it, uh, afterwards. So let's go ahead and do another one here. Oops, make sure we get that corner, two comma two. Now this is another instance where snapping is really your friend. If you start getting tired of uh, entering in the 30 for the length every single time, hit the option key for that, you can't really remember how long this thing was, all you have to do is hover the push-pull tool over the bottom of one of the legs, so like right here, and you notice it snaps right down so that those are at exactly the same height or depth or whatever you want to call it which is very nice. So you don't have to enter in the 30 every single time and you'll know that they are exactly the same height. So that's perfect. And let's do that one more time over here. Hit the option key and 
drag that down, hover over this leg this time. There we go. Switch back to the selection tool. And we now have a very nice tabletop. So this is a very simple object, but uh, you know we used some techniques that we haven't really used before, which is very good. Um, so now we've got this whole thing as one nice big piece. You notice if we triple click on it, it's its own entity. It's all just one solid piece. But these extra lines here really help give it uh, a nice natural and you know real look. Now this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Let's say we want to drag this table into our model. Well, you know your instinct might be to just select it, triple click on it, or drag a marquee around it like this. Use the Move tool, M for the Move tool, and you might think, oh, I'll just uh, snap to the bottom of it, bottom of one of its legs right here, click on it, drag it into the room, so we'll go in here, and you notice that your Move tool automatically snaps to the, uh, the, the floor or the ground or whatever you want to call it, so the table isn't like hovering above or getting um, going through the floor, it's right at the top there, and then just click once and there you go you've got your table in your room very nice so we can go to the selection tool deselect very nice now let's say we want to reposition this table move it somewhere else so let's say we triple click on uh oh you remember back in the groups episode we mentioned that if you've got two raw objects so in this case the room is raw it's just lines and faces and you've got a table that's all lines and faces or some other object they're now touching and they are considered one seamless object now so triple clicking marquee,ing isn't gonna get you anywhere because it is now also stuck to the floor so it's gonna be practically impossible to move it and this is another great example of why it's insanely difficult because I mean if you when we were just working with cubes it was fine you know we could we could kind of go through and select the faces and the lines manually. But in this case, we've got way more stuff going on here. It's going to take us forever. And this is actually a very simple piece of furniture. When we get into things like chairs, it's going to get even more complex. So let me show you how we can avoid this. And this is just a really good lesson to learn. We're going to go ahead and undo, get our table back out here. It's not touching anything, so we can triple click and just select that table. This is where it gets really important to use groups. So go ahead and right click or control click on it and choose make group. And now you see just one click will select the whole thing, so that's very nice. But also, if we use the move tool on this leg right here, grab its corner, drag it into our model. By the way, you get really used to going through walls when you're working in SketchUp. Just drag it into our model, snap it to our floor right there. So now we've got our table in our room, but now I can select our table and use the move tool and move it wherever I want within the room because it's completely separate. Now an important thing to note is that the actual room, the walls and everything like that are still raw. So they're still non you know they're still ungrouped they're still just raw edges and faces lines and faces that's all they are you don't need to have everything grouped uh, to make sure that they don't stick now I want to be honest with you looking at the table in the room right now it's looking pretty big yeah I'm not really seeing a very natural place where it can go so let's learn how to go into a group and edit it particularly a more complex group like this so what we're going to do is to edit a group you'll recall we just select the group and double click on it. And you notice everything else kind of fades into a green oblivion. And now we can actually, we're back in our raw lines and faces mode. So we can now do all the edits we want. Now let's say this table, honestly, I would rather have it be more square. So like we know that uh, this line here is four feet, but this is seven feet long. I want it to be just a four foot square table now. So how do we do that? Well. You can use the push-pull tool while you're editing the group to grab this edge and pull it back. Now you notice the, uh, <laughs> the legs are just staying put. They're just staying there. And that's fine. 
we're going to actually delete them and redo them because it's going to be kind of tricky to select the legs and then move them. It's actually easier to pull this back. And let's see, we want this to be four feet instead of seven feet. Seven minus three is four. So we'll just pull this back and then enter in three apostrophe for three feet. Go. There we go. That's our new tabletop. Now we've got these legs and these weird <laughs> two dimensional strips right here that are still connecting them. You don't really need that. So what we're going to do now is we are going to delete them, but it's going to get pretty old deleting all this stuff by hand, just selecting, deleting, selecting, deleting, selecting, deleting. There's a lot of stuff here. So we're going to learn about a very handy little tool now called the eraser tool. And the eraser tool is up in the toolbar here. It looks exactly like an eraser. It's right there. You can also find it over here in the tool palette or its keyboard shortcut is, imagine this, E for eraser. So we'll just type the letter E on our keyboard, go into the eraser tool. Now with the eraser, the eraser deletes things. But what makes it different from, say, selecting something and using the delete key is that you can delete multiple things very, very quickly. And all you have to do is just click and drag over the things that you want to delete, just kind of swipe. And you can see anything that turns blue, any line that turns blue will be deleted. So you see we've got all this stuff highlighted in blue here. We release and it's all gone. Now you'll notice with the eraser tool, if we were to, for example, click on the face, even drag on the face, nothing. That's because the eraser tool only works on lines, but that doesn't really matter because if you're looking to delete something like this, if we delete this line right here, the faces go away too. Remember, you remove the lines, you remove the faces. If you do want to remove just a face, then you have to go in and manually select that face and delete it. But if you're just looking to kind of wipe some stuff out, just kind of drag over it and delete it. And when you're in group edit mode, you don't have to worry about like using the eraser tool on other things in your model because if you're editing a group, the only thing you can, can, you can actually edit is the group. So I can swipe all I want over these windows, nothing's gonna happen. If I were to get out of the group, you wanna be a little bit more careful about what you select. And you'll notice pretty quickly if something goes wrong and you delete something you didn't mean to. But for now, let's go ahead and get these uh, table legs back. Now here is another great example of some real world modeling problems. You notice that the bottom face of our tabletop has been deleted somehow. It's really difficult to predict when this is going to happen, but it will happen to you. You'll see a face go away when you delete some other stuff. And for some reason, even though you didn't select that face and deliberately delete it, well, you deleted something else that for some reason deleted that face. It's really hard to predict. But you'll notice, you might think, well, there's no problem with this, is there? I mean, you just have all these lines here. I mean, every, the the face should exist. It's enclosed on all sides. There's no breaks. It's all on the same uh, plane. There should be a face there. There's no reason there shouldn't be. Well, something deleted it. And even though these lines are capable of creating a face, they're not. So the easiest way to get a face back when you have a situation like this is to switch to the line tool, L for the line tool, and just retrace one of the lines that's surrounding it. So for example, I'll just highlight over this. And yes, I know the line is still here. I'm just redrawing it. And when I do redraw it, it kind of refreshes it. And the face is back. So even though there was no problem when we were deleting those legs, something deleted that face for some reason. It wasn't anything that we did. It just happens. So just keep an eye out for that. If it does happen, don't freak out. Just retrace one of the lines and it should pop right back. If retracing the lines doesn't bring it back, then look around because if retracing lines doesn't bring it back, that means that, that lo those lines aren't capable of making a face. That means that there's a break in it or they're on a different, they're not on the same plane. Something's going on. So you want to kind of troubleshoot that. But now back to the table legs, let's go ahead and add another table like here. Remember, we're going to use the option key, click once. And in this case, rather than snapping to the table legs, I'm just going to snap to the floor. Even though we can't edit the floor, we can still use all these things in our other model, in the rest of our model, like these windowsills and stuff. Even though we can't edit them, we can still use them to snap to. 
So, whoops, go through a wall. <laughs> Get out of that wall. There we go. So we'll just click once on the floor, and now those table legs are going right to the floor. We'll just do the same thing over here really quickly. Two inch square, push pull tool, use the option key. Click once, snap to the floor, and we are done. So now, to get out of the uh, group edit mode, oops, we are just going to uh, double click elsewhere in the model. And there we go, we are now out of that group. It's still a group, and you see it's at, the group has resized itself automatically now that it's smaller. It's still the perfect size. It's still its own group. We can still move it around all we want, even though we made some pretty drastic changes to the group. You can do whatever you want. You could delete the entire group and start from scratch. As long as you're within that group, it's going to stay a group when you get out of it. So now let's see here. Nice little trick when you're arranging furniture in SketchUp is to kind of get a bird's eye view of everything. Makes it really nice and easy to see what you've got. Now I'm kind of thinking this table would be nice up against this wall right here. So let's go ahead and zoom back down here. Let's go ahead and grab the table. Uh, we'll grab it uh, by its leg corner right here, the leg that's right up against the floor. That way we can make sure that it stays on the floor. And let's snap it up against this wall right here. This little line right here where the wall and the floor intersect, we can actually snap to that so that we know it's right on the floor and it's right up against that wall. Click once, and there we go. Now let's say I want to, oops, let's say I want to center it in between these two windows. We are actually going to use the tape measure tool again to uh, figure out where the center of this space in between these two windows is. So we're going to switch the tape measure tool, use the T key, click once on an edge, pull this out, but there's no way to really snap to the middle of these two windows because there's no line to snap to over here. So what we're going to do instead is we're just going to snap to the other edge, and you can see down at the bottom right corner, the dimensions box is turned to the length box, and it says that the length of those, the space between those two windows is two feet. So that means that if we divide that by two, that's the exact center between these two windows. So we're just going to type in one apostrophe, and now we have a guide at one foot or exactly in between these two windows. And now what we can do is we can use the move tool and we're going to grab our table instead of by grabbing it by the foot or the feet, we're actually going to snap to the midpoint of the group or the middle of the table, that particular table edge. We're going to grab it there and now we can move it left and right. And if you want to make sure that you're moving it the correct way, you can snap it to an axis. So let's type the left arrow key to snap it to the green axis and now we can just hover over that guide right there and click once once it snaps to it and now we have that table perfectly centered between those two windows it's very nice and we can use uh, just select that guide and delete it and now we've got that table now let's real quickly uh, model some chairs let's see if uh, you can keep up with uh, what I do without me having to explain everything. Now a chair, if you think about the elements that make up a chair, it's actually quite similar to a table. You have the chair top, so let's just draw a quick chair top here. And let's say we want the chair to be uh, 14 inches square. So we'll type in 14 comma 14, enter. So that's gonna be the seat of our chair. We'll pull this up into 3D, oops pull it up one inch and then let's go ahead and go underneath it and we'll make a couple of one inch square legs so so far it's pretty much the same thing as a table just much smaller and you notice I'm just making all these squares at once because I'm in the rectangle tool I might as well go ahead and do that rather than rectangle pull it down rectangle pull it down it's easier to just go rectangle, 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 pull, 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 pull. So now let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and pull these down. Make sure to use the option key. And let's make these oh, 18 inches high. Let's see how that goes. How's that look? All right, that looks 
That looks pretty good. It actually looks a little bit tall, strangely enough. So actually, let's go ahead and make these legs a little bit shorter. And to do that, we're going to make sure that we're not in little copy mode. We're not in the plus sign mode of the push-pull tool. We're just in the normal push-pull mode. And let's go ahead and push it back four inches so that these legs are 14 inches tall rather than 18 inches. That just kind of looks a bit more natural. So now we've got what looks like a really tiny table. This is where the chair part comes in. So let's go ahead and draw a rectangle. Let's make this the chair back. So we know that the rectangle is going to be 14 inches wide. And you can see down the dimensions box the first, um, just by snapping to this other edge, we know how long the rectangle is going to be. And down the dimensions box it says, one foot two or 14 inches and then the three and three quarters of an inch and by the way that little that little squiggly line right there that tilde line actually means if you see that before a measurement in SketchUp that means that it's not exactly three and three quarters of an inch or whatever the entry after it is it's not exactly that but it's close and SketchUp just can't really tell you like you know three and you know 16 one twenty eighths of an inch or you know whatever it is so but in this case we know that the first entry is going to be 14 inches so let's go ahead and type 14 inches that means that, that makes sure that we know that that rectangle is going to be the perfect width of the chair back and let's make it one inch deep turn very nice and now we've got this rectangle right here let's go ahead and use the uh, push pull tool use the option key and pull it up let's make this our chair back let's make it one foot three tall. So we'll go one apostrophe and then three, one foot tall. Very nice. So now we've got a very nice little chair here, but that chair back is kind of not really very interesting. Let's make it a little bit more interesting. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw a rectangle for a hole and I'm going to punch through that hole. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, First of all, this is kind of similar. In our last episode, we talked about making windows and doorways. In this case, we're going to do kind of a similar thing. We're going to draw some guides that are, oops, one inch in from either side. And then let's say we want this to be about eight inches high. So now we've got this kind of kind of like a little guideline that just kind of says that's about how big we want our rectangle to be. We can start at one corner, go to the opposite corner, we're good. We can use the delete guides command to delete the guides, and then use the push pull tool, just regular old push pull, and push that back. And now we have a very nice little chair. Now, as again, you'll notice that we've got this weird thing here where it seems like these things here, these little things here should be their own pieces, and you should have this rectangle up here. Rather than there being just this one, whole thing being one seamless piece like that, it seems like there should be a line here and here. Now, in this case, this is already done. There's no real way to use the push-pull tool to fix this. So instead, we're going to actually add these lines manually. We're going to switch to the line tool, click on this corner right here, and then drag across. Make sure that that line stays green. If you'll remember, um, go back to our episode on the line tool if you don't remember this, but the line tools will actually snap to the axis. So like right now, not snapping to an axis, it's black. But right now, the line turns blue. It's snapping to the blue axis. Right now, the line's red. It's snapping to the red axis. In this case, the line is green, snapping to the green axis. We click once, and now it's a straight line across. And now we can just keep Continuing that line, red axis, green axis like that, and now, see that looks much better. Let's go ahead and do it on the other side as well. Click, click, and that's an easy one, click. Good, so now we've got a very nice, simple, whoops, again, you see how, we, how difficult it is to do this outside the room? Imagine doing it inside the room. So now we've got a very nice little chair here. Let's go ahead and select the whole thing by triple clicking on it and make it a group. And now let's grab it by the bottom of one of its feet. Oops, 
There we go. Zoom into our room. And now let's let's put these chairs over here. Now it looks like our chairs actually ended up being a little bit smaller than our table, a lot smaller actually. But there's actually a very easy way to fix that, and that is with another tool. See, this is kind of tricky because a chair might look huge to you out in the real world or out in this virtual world, but you bring it in and start integrating it with your room and your table and everything, and it's too small or too big. But proportionately, it looks great. Like, as it's on its own, it looks great, but compared to this normal size table, it's teeny. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use the selection tool and click on it once. And this is kind of an unusual tool, um, but it's it's really useful. If you go up to the tools menu, it's not in the toolbar up here. It's in the tools menu. You'll notice right down here, there's this one called scale. And if you select it, whatever you have selected gets these weird floating green boxes on them. What you can do is you can actually use those. If you grab them with the scale tool, you can actually use them to make your thing bigger or smaller. And you know, it, there's no real way to like, you know, really kind of you know, figure out exactly how big it's going to be, but you can make it just nice and uh, just kind of eyeball it. So like right around there, that looks pretty good. Now, keep in mind, which box you uh, grab kind of makes a difference. If you were to grab like this center box at the top here, it's going to stretch it out along the blue axis like that. Same thing with these boxes here or these boxes here. So you want to kind of experiment with them a little bit. You can get some pretty weird kind of funhouse mirror effect kind of things. But typically if you grab by one of these upper corners, it's going to scale it just, you know, normally. It's not going to be stretching it or anything like that. It's just going to be making the whole thing bigger. So let's make it about that big. That's one and a half times as big. And we switch back to the selection tool. Yeah, that seems to be a little bit better. Let's find out how tall that is. Let's use the tape measure tool, figure out how tall that is. That's about one foot ten. The the seat is about one foot ten. So that's that seems to be a very nice chair size. And you're gonna run into things like this when you're first building furniture, because sometimes, in fact a lot of times, you think, oh a chair, a two foot high chair. No, chairs aren't two feet high, that's too tall. As such you'll make them fourteen inches high. And that's way too small. So using the scale tool can really help you not have to erase all your hard work you've done in your chair just because you got a scaling thing wrong. So let's go ahead and use the rotate tool. Remember the rotate tool, Q. And we'll grab a chair by its seat right here. And we'll rotate it around 90 degrees. Remember, you can use these little tick marks in here to snap 90 degrees. Use our move tool. Let's tuck this chair in oops, underneath our table like that. Very nice. So those are some basic furnishings that you can do for your, um, your room. Uh, you can make them as simple or as complex as you like. You can add more details, and we actually will be adding more details in future episodes. But um, this is a really nice starting point uh, for furnishings. So as you can see, we're really starting to delve into the meat of SketchUp here. We're starting to really get our hands dirty with some modeling. We're really uh, modeling real-world things. This is a completely realistic project that you could be doing. Maybe it's a remodel or you're redecorating something. And these are problems that you will encounter just in your day-to-day -day use of SketchUp. And they're really quite simple to deal with. And uh, once you learn how to deal with them, it's really not that big of a deal. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, if you want to download uh, the lesson file from our last episode where we actually built the living room we were working with today, you can download that lesson file at our website, which is www.harwoodpodcast.com. And if you have any questions or comments for me about the show, you can go ahead and send me an email at cameron at harwoodpodcast.com. Until next time, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling.